So this is the biggest maintenance portion uh, of these shocks. Um, this grease should be changed like ev about every other rally. At the school here, we, we run about 60 hours on the car before we take this apart and check the grease and replace it and, and that kind of stuff. Today we are rebuilding uh, this Riger shock off one of the school cars. Uh, there's a tag here that says it's uh, clunking, so we're, we're going to take it apart, uh, figure out what's wrong with it, and uh, completely put it back together uh, with all new parts. Um, so to start, we put these um, covers on our shocks. It's a neoprene boot that allows, it keeps dirt out of the shock and allows the shock to live a longer life. Um, you know, we're constantly running out in dirt out here all day, every day. Um, so this is a necessity to the shock. Cut the zip tie here. Sometimes the, the boots wear out. This one's getting a little old, so we'll replace it uh, after we fix the shock here. So I'm gonna roll the boot down. This will give us access to the shock. As you can see, there's dirt inside here. That's because there's holes in the boot. All right, so now that we got this boot rolled up, um, we need to get the shock apart. Um, the spring is under pressure, so you don't wanna just start uh, gunning the top nut. So we have what's called a uh, spring compressor over here. So we are gonna put the spring in this uh, spring compressor. Once we get it all hooked up, we'll start cranking this down. This will start taking some of the pressure uh, off the shock so we can get it it apart and away from the spring. All right, as you can see, now my shock is loose. So now I'm clear to take apart uh, the top. So now we'll remove the top hat. Take off the boot and some washers. Now the shock will slide out the bottom and it's away from the spring. So as you can see here, the shock looks a little different than what you'd see in like a, a normal car, like a Honda or a, you know, a Toyota street car. Um, it's actually inverted. So what that means is the shock is now upside down inside of a shock body, um, this being the shock body. And it has more, more moving components. Um, so the shock slides inside this big tube and there's bushings inside here that have to be serviced and greased and um, kept up on the maintenance on. Um, so now we're gonna take this apart. Um, the housing is super dirty, so we need to get it cleaned up. And then uh, we'll check the actual shock for condition um, see if it's blown up or what we got to do to it. So on the bottom of the shock housing here is another nut. These are usually Loctited in place. So they're sometimes hard to get off. There we go. Okay, so here's our shock portion and here's our shock body. Our stanchion tube, if you want to call it. So inside here is a bunch of grease that allows this shock to slide freely inside this tube. So right now I'm checking the shock for condition. I can hear it bubbling and hissing at me, so that makes me think it has some bad seals inside. Next, I'll check the nitrogen level on it, make sure it's got what kind of air pressure it has. So this is like a basketball or a football or a soccer ball. It's got like a self-healing um, uh, rubber bladder on top so I can just check the nitrogen level. So the nitrogen's, nitrogen's at five bar. It should be at eight. So that tells me that something in the shock is bad, like a seal's leaking. Um, so we'll have to tear this shock down and uh, change out the shock oil, change out the seals, 
um, put some all new parts in it. Uh, first, I'm gonna get this kind of cleaned up a little bit. That way I'm not getting dirt all over my table and around my shock. Um, so we'll take this out to the pressure washer, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll clean off our table, clean off some of the rocks and mess that we've made already. Okay, so now we're gonna work on rebuilding the shock portion uh, of the whole damper. Um, so these are aluminum V-blocks. They go in a vise and they clamp onto shock bodies so they don't uh, damage them. Um, they're super soft and they won't crush the tube. So grab the correct socket here and tighten this guy down. Now our shock's held in place in the vise. Uh, now we'll take the shock apart. So here we're taking the shock top off. So down here, I'm gonna put a needle into where you uh, fill the air. This will allow, this will deflate the shock. A little bit of fluid will come out with the, the Riger setup. And my goal here is to get the shock into a negative, negative pressure. over, do the same thing. Be a little careful, some stuff might fly out. Oil, nitrogen. So I'll put the shock through its full stroke and then I'll pull this, I'll let it bleed out all the air. Wait a minute here, still bubbling. And then I'll pull this needle. Now the shock should stay in, and that did. So now that it's stuck down like that in a negative pressure, I can start to disassemble the top and get inside the shock. Give this a little tap of the hammer. And in here it's gonna be a snap ring. On most shocks, a snap ring is gonna keep the top, the top cap into place and let it slide out as the shock goes through its travel. Snap ring out. Let's put it on our bench here. And now we can pull the shock. And almost pull it straight out the top. So this is the shock shaft, and this is the tube that the shock shaft rides in. So the way this works is there's a divider plate in here, about approximately about right here. And on the top half is nitrogen, and on the bottom half is uh, oil. And as the shock goes through the oil, as it pushes down, uh, the oil will go through these shim stacks. Um, one side of the shim stacks being uh, uh, compression and the other side being rebound. Um, so the oil has to push through all these washers, washers and shim stacks in here and that's what controls your valving. Um, shocks are adjustable through through shims and uh, different, different size uh, washers down here. They're also adjustable by the size of the holes um, that you see uh, here for the oil to go through. So there's only a couple seals 
that uh, are involved with the shock. Um, there's the uh, the Teflon band here, which helps keep the shock straight inside the tube. There's an O-ring behind that. There's an O-ring here on the top cap, and then there's also an O-ring uh, inside this that that seals the shock shaft to this cap. Um, so when going through these shocks, there's only about three places it can leak. Um, so since we're here, we're just gonna go through and replace uh, all the O-rings um, inside that. So I'll go ahead and take this tube out and clean out some of the old shock oil. Set this to the side for now, and we'll work on on this guy. So now we're going to attack the the inside O-ring inside this center seal, which looks to be our problem. It's kind of wallowed out, so shock oil was probably leaking. Um, through this center shaft seal along this edge here. Um, so I'll put this actually in my aluminum V-block. This is actually two pieces, the top piece on threads on this shock, particular shock. So as I take this top cap off here, it's going to show us the middle O-ring. So this O-ring goes on this shock shaft. So we'll grab a new one, get our new parts out. So one thing that's very important when you're putting this seal onto this rod is not to cut it. Um, this is kind of a sh sharp edge right here. So when you slide this in, um, it can sometimes get ruined. So what I like to do on this particular shock style, I actually I will actually slide this onto the shock shaft and then put this O-ring in here. Where well, it's nice and loose and easy to put on. Nice, good, good slide here. I'll then put it back in my V-block and reassemble. Very important to make sure all your parts are clean when you're going back together. No dirt and cruds getting inside your shock.
All right, now we just have two other O-rings left to replace. Grab a rag here. Make sure everything's clean. Very important. So this O-ring is behind our Teflon band. So take that off, grab a new one. The old one to the side and then our top cap O-ring, outer O-ring. Okay, so now this assembly is ready to go back together with a new Teflon band here. So now we'll get our shock tube back over here. We're gonna wanna spray this out. We've already cleaned it with a little bit of brake clean, but we'll make sure nothing else is in there. Set our stanchion tube back up on our V-block. Grab some tools. So now I'm just spraying out the top of the shock uh, with the inflator. This is to make sure that no oil is in where the nitrogen only should be. Um, sometimes this happens when the shock goes bad, like a seal goes bad, oil will get into where the air is supposed to be and now they're mixed and that's why the shock is clunking. So I'm just spraying out the air portion chamber of the shock. Now it's clean. Up, we're going to put some shock oil into the damper tube here. Go over here to our shock oil. We're going to get 11.9 ounces. So we'll tilt the damper a little bit. That'll allow some of the oil in the shock to aerate a little bit and, and leave. So we'll put our Teflon band here on the shock. The bottom down here by the shim stack. And we'll insert it into the damper tube. And I'll cycle it up and down a little bit. This helps bleed some of the air. Um, a lot of little tiny holes on the bottom of that stack there, so. All right, next we'll take a, a little tube here and gently tap the top plate into place. And now we'll grab our snap ring that we removed earlier and put that back on top of the top plate there.
All right, so now that the shock portion is back together, we can put some nitrogen back into it and double check, make sure everything seems good. This particular shock takes about eight bar of nitrogen. Um, and you, you'll see as I put nitrogen into the shock that this will actually extend. All right, there's eight bar. Before I completely reassemble and make sure that it's not leaking anywhere. And I'll also cycle it through its travel again, make sure I don't hear any bubbles or and it goes all the way, that's good. If you start cycling the shock and it stops about right here, that means you have too much oil in it and you could actually hydro lock the, the shock. So everything appears to be good with the shock portion. So we will um, service the damper tube uh, with some grease and put this all back together. Okay, so this is the biggest maintenance portion uh, of these shocks. Um, this grease should be changed like about every other rally. At the school here, we, we run about 60 hours on the car before we take this apart and check the grease and replace it and, and that kind of stuff. So in here, there are two bushings um, which ride up against this shock. Um, and that's what keep, keeps it uh, nice and rigid. It doesn't flop around in there. Um, sometimes these bushings do go bad. Um, you'll notice on your car when you go to shake your wheels um, that you'll have a clunk and you'll see the damper kind of flexing in and out like this. Um, that's usually because these bushings are bad and this shock is just waddling around inside this tube. Um, if you let that get too bad, you can you can scratch all this stuff um, and wallow it out, and then you'll you'll need a whole new, complete new set. Um, so doing the proper maintenance on it um, will save you a lot of time and money in the long run. In order to keep these bushings good, um, there has to be good lubrication between the the shock and the in the tube. So we mix up um, some Redline CV grease mixed with um, 7590 gear oil to kind of dilute it down. It turns the, the, the grease into kind of more of a, a thicker oil. Uh, if you go too thick, um, the grease can gum up. If you go too thin, um, you can kind of lose some of the lubricating properties. Like if you just do like a straight fork oil, there's a chance it might just stay in the bottom or or something like that. So I'm gonna pop off this top seal here. This green seal is what seals uh, dirt from, from getting uh, in between and getting inside the shock. We'll replace that after we get some new grease in there. Notice I'm cleaning everything too. I don't want any, any dirt debris in here, scratching anything or ruining the bushings. So now I'm going to go and actually pour, pour some grease in here. There's not like a certain speck of grease that you want in here, but you really want the grease to be packed tight uh, in between the two bushings. There's a space about a, of about an inch and a half, um, and you want to get that really solid full of grease. Um, that way, uh, this thing can slide freely and there's, there's good lubrication at all times. OK, 
Okay, so now that we got our grease in there, packaged tightly between our bushings, we're gonna put a new top seal, dust seal on the tube here. So this is just a generic bushing driver tool that uh, we can hit the end with the hammer and pop this bushing into place. All right, so we'll evenly tap this thing all the way down until it seats. And sometimes these have a spring on them. Put the spring back on. Okay, so our shock is assembled. We got grease in our damper tube. Put our bump stop on our shock. Uh, this is pretty important. Uh, you don't want the shock to bottom out because then it can just um, crush things inside or blow out uh, seals, things like that. So this, this, this bump rubber here is pretty important. Um, it'll help it keep it safe from, from going too far on its travel. So we'll slide this back in the tube here with all the grease inside. Clean up a little bit of the grease that came out the bottom here. Now in this case, uh, this car is a STI, so it has a McPherson front strut. So the top hat is gonna sit on here and turn. So this turns the shock sometimes, which in turn will turn this nut on the bottom of the damper tube. So it's very important that we lock tight the bottom of this of this shock. Grab a little bit of blue here. Let my other socket go. There it is. And after some lock tight, we'll tighten this back up. Okay, so now we're completely back together. Shock travels, it's inside the damper tube that's re-greased. Uh, nitrogen level's good, new shock oil, so we know that's good. Uh, we're ready to go back into its spring. Uh, so as I talked about earlier, we have our shock boot covers. Our boot cover was a little torn, so I'm gonna throw it away and get a new one. Okay, so we'll slide this here back into the spring. Put our cover on next.
And on top of that, the top hat. Tighten up the top hat here. And undo the spring compressor. And that's it. Uh, we got a freshly rebuilt Riger shock uh, ready to go back on a school car. Um, very important that these every shock manufacturer builds their shocks differently. Um, they have different specs for oil weights, uh, oil capacities, nitrogen levels, things like that. So um, always check with the shock supplier, make sure that you have the right parts, right specs, all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching today. Uh, please feel free to comment anything you have questions about. Uh, in the comments below and subscribe to the channel for more uh, future tech tips. Thanks.